Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan Rice. On this episode, I want to cover with you 20 items either you should do or have with you while you kayak fish. So I want to start off by saying I've been kayak fishing now for going on almost seven years so I, I don't have a little bit of experience I don't have a whole bunch of experience but within seven years I do have quite a bit of seat time there's guys out there that's been doing a lot longer than me we all make these videos about you know things that we should either bring with us kayak fishing or have with us or recommendations a lot of us cover on YouTube the same things but we present it a little bit differently we all have our opinions of things that we should really have with us. On this video, I'm going to cover the more important things that you should have with you towards the beginning of fishing, kayaking, and as you progress through your, your changes and your, your involvement in this sport and hobby, things that you should eventually get because I have experienced a lot of things on the water. I have purchased a lot of kayaks. I have been through a lot of different gear. So I have a lot of experience with the things that are on the market. If you've been following along, you know I've been through a lot of uh, gear, a lot of ways of transporting kayaks. So overall, I think my experience in this game, in this sport, is pretty good. So let's start off with number one. Uh, I do have a list here because I'm getting older and forget. So I do have a video out there, you know, the biggest mistake when purchasing or getting a kayak. And the biggest mistake is, this is item number one, is getting the wrong kayak. You need to find the place that you can water test a kayak. You need to water test it to make sure that you feel comfortable on that kayak. Everybody's balance is different. So you need to spend time on that kayak to make sure that you're going to be comfortable when you're in, in climate weather, rough conditions, or any of those things. You got to feel safe and secure on your kayak. So it's very important that you water test a kayak and get the most expensive kayak you can afford that's what i'm going to suggest because the higher you go up in the scale of the kayak the better handling it is the better it is for fishing and all that stuff number two is an item that is not technically the law but it's highly recommended by everybody who kayak fishes and spends time on the water and that's a pfd i've used this from day one right now you probably see sweat running off my head it's hot no matter what the temperature is out there i wear this whether it's hot or cold it's very important a lot of people say i've commented on facebook group pages that they see you guys out there without pfds and they you know hit me back well i'm an adult i don't need to wear it well i'm an adult too i'm 45 years old and i wear it it's not about how strong of a swimmer you are it's not about how confident you are getting in the water it's that just in case moment you hit by a boater you have a heart attack some health issue whatever and you fall into the water Yes, if you fall face down and you're floating face down and you're unconscious, unfortunately, it's not going to end well. But if you have a PFD on and you fall in the water and you end, end up face up, there's a really good chance somebody's going to see you on the water and say, you know, report and call 911. Hey, I got somebody floating in the water. And at least if you are conscious and you're breathing, you have a very good chance of, of still surviving. And to me, that's very important. For me to see people on the water with a PFD. Everybody preaches this, so I'm not going to really drag it out in this video, but it's very important to have a PFD no matter how strong of a swimmer you are. Real quick, before I get off the PFD thing, I actually had a guy in a video the other day say, oh, what's that cool pouch, you know, that chest pouch you have on? Because in this pouch here, showing them my uh, Rogue Gear Company tether for my phone, and he just thought it was just like a chest pouch holding my phone. So my reply was in the professional, neat, nice way, is that's my PFD. No response back after that, though but he thought I was just wearing a chest pouch. Having a PFD gives you the ability to store your phone. If you have, you know, this is set up for fishing, store your phone, store all the goodies that you need to have. I have my throttle magnet, you know, kill switch on here for my Torquedo. And it comes to number three is a whistle. You know, I keep a whistle in my PFD. If you're on a vessel, you should have some form of noise making device, whether it's a whistle, air horn. I have an air horn too. Having an air horn can really grab the attention of boaters when they're coming at you and you don't think they're going to turn over the whistle. You can also have some fun with your buddies with an air horn when you have it on your boat. You can you know sneak up behind them and hit the air horn and they jump and you get that on video and have a little bit of a blooper so you can have fun with an air horn too but that's number three you need to have a 
sound making device and a lot of PFDs on the market come with a whistle already attached to it. You know, I bought this one separately because I actually had a, a larger boat. So I actually had a whistle with me anyway. And I just moved it to my PFD when I started kayak fishing. Number four, you want to have a paddle with you at all times. Even if you have a pedal drive kayak, at one point I have a motor on mine. I used to have the Hobie. Well, actually I still have the Hobie just on my primary. But at one point your motor your fin drive, your pedal drive is going to break. So you have to have some form of a way of getting back. People say to me, oh, I spend a lot of money on a paddle. These more expensive paddles are very, very lightweight. And they're also extremely durable over like having just a standard metal one with plastic blades. These have a carbon fiber blade to them. So you can really beat these up. When you go back into areas that are very shallow and you can't get back into with your motor or you just want to get back where the boaters can't go. You can pull your motor up and also get back there with just paddling through. Because most of your kayaks today do have a draft of about six or less inches, sometimes a little bit deeper depending on the hole. But you can get in super shallow water. So this helps you get back to where the fish are as well. But the most important thing is you need a way to get back if something fails. And that comes into number five of this list is I suggest... Do not go farther from where you launched or too sure where you can call for help if you're not physically able to paddle back if you have a malfunction on your kayak. A lot of the kayaks we have that, you know, for the people who go fishing, we have them weighed down with a lot of gear. So they're not going to move as fast if you're just in the standard paddle kayak where you don't have anything on it, just really you, that you can move a little bit faster. So you don't want to go too far away from where you launched or by the shore if you have a malfunction and you need to get back, you know, even in a storm. You know, if there's a storm that comes about and you are having problems and you just want to get to shore, make sure you're physically able to get back there. So just keep aware of how far you are away from safety, basically, and you are able to paddle back. So don't go farther than that motor can take you, your, your pedal drive can take you. If you physically cannot get back, to safety. Number six is I suggest you have some sort of flag on your kayak, whether it's high vis. This has reflective tape on it and some orange up here. This is, you know, the American flag I changed out from the orange when it came with the Yak Attack Visipro because I like to share, you know, show that we are in USA and, and show my support for that. But they usually come with a orange flag and you can just keep that if you want, but you want a high vis flag on your kayak because these stick up high. So, you know, a kayak is really close to the water. And when you're on plane in the boat, a lot of times, if you don't see that kayaker from far away, and I know this from experience from owning boats or when you're, you know, taken off and you, the bow of your boat goes up, you don't really see for a little bit what's in front of you. So if you're really close to water in a kayak like we are, you may not be seen by boaters. Now, you know, when you're on the water, you can be seen from miles away, but you just look like a you know, maybe just like a little blur and in, in, in the horizon, but having the flag, something that's going to be waving around, sticking higher up than your kayak is going to allow those boaters to really see you from a farther distance away and hopefully keeps them alert. Number seven, speaking of being alert, you need to be alert. You need to be alert of your surroundings, what's around you, whether it's another, you know, a bunch of boats, alligators, snakes, anything that can hurt you, harm you, you just need to see and be alert around you. You know, always keep your head on the swivel. If you're into, you know, into catching the fish. I've been into a lot of scenarios where I'm catching a big red and it's basically pulling me around. I still look like this the whole time because there's always boaters coming around. And if that fish is dragging you out into the main channel where these boaters are coming, you're going to want to try to fight that fish and get away from that main channel. Or if a boater's coming up from behind you and all of a sudden that fish pulls you to the left and you're going into the path of that boater, you just got to be very conscious of your surroundings. We expect the boaters to see us all the time and that doesn't always happen. So you also have to be conscious of your surroundings. And that's very, very important. I know we're out there, we're having fun. You know, we got our we're we're focused on what we're doing, but always just just pop up every now and then because I've had other boaters trolling motors on just sneak up on me and all of a sudden I turn around and, and it startles me. You know, they're sneaking up behind me, not on purpose, but they're just fishing the bank and they and they sneak up on you because you don't hear those trolling motors. So it, you just want to be alert 
And also at the same time, if a boater's right behind you and you turn and he's kind of fishing right next to you, say, really? Do you have to fish right here? You couldn't go around me? I've had that happen quite a few times. Number eight, guys, I keep a dry bag with me, whether you have a dry bag or you have a storage hatch in your kayak where you can keep things dry. You want to keep inside this thing, inside my dry bag, I keep quite a few items, which we're going to go over quite a few of them. But really up to item 12, I would say on my list here, let me see, up to probably item 13 is probably good suggestion that you get these items soon is I keep a first aid kit with me. Whether it's to help you or help a buddy or help any else in the water, first aid kit, these cost about 10 bucks. I got this one at Home Depot. It gives you the essentials inside here, band-aids, uh, cold packs, uh, sunburn cream, or if you get yourself burned, or if you hook yourself with a treble hook, there's tweezers in here, there's scissors, there's gauze. There's a, a lot of items in this little box that can help you either a stay on the water or if it's that serious, stay alive. First aid kit can really help. If you don't have a lot of first aid experience, I get trained at work. If you don't have a lot of first aid ex experience, I would just YouTube, Google things, watch how people do things. Speaking of Googling things, if you get hooked, watch uh, people, you know, how they remove treble hooks where you push down, take your line, and you can pull that treble hook out yourself. It's easier. Somebody else does it for you. But there's a lot of videos out there that show you how to take a hook out. You can kind of cover that under this item. But first aid kits are very important thing you want to keep with you. They don't take up much room. You can see how small this dry bag is. And I keep a lot of things in this dry bag. We're going to actually go over quite a few of those. So number nine, while we're on the dry bag and what's in here, sunscreen with you. And you want to apply this multiple times a day. You can have a lot of issues down the line, which I'm actually having because when I was a kid, I didn't really protect myself. I didn't, I didn't really care. You know, you think you're invincible, but it's catching up with me now. I'm fair skinned. So I get burned quite easily. I get, I've been burned pretty seriously throughout my life. And it's actually required emergency treatment at the ERs. That was very painful. So just keeping yourself covered, UPF shirts, right? UPF, ultraviolet protection shirts. Wear these shirts, I wear either long pants or if I wear shorts, I just apply a lot of uh, sunscreen on my legs. I keep it on my face. I wear buffs. You know, we'll kind of cover that under this whole thing. But sunscreen is very important to put on yourself. Down the line, that sun is going to affect you with skin cancer, If especially if it runs in your family. You don't know that. So sun sunscreen is very, very important, guys. I also keep bug spray in this dry bag. Down here in the south, you probably see me flying around right now because it's so hot and humid. That's why I'm sweating. We get attacked in the morning and at nighttime by bugs almost all year round. So we got sand gnats, those things bite you. We got mosquitoes, we got mosquitoes. I've seen this big, I've never seen a mosquito that big before. So having bug spray, no matter where you live, is also another important item. Even if you don't have it on your kayak, just spray yourself in the morning before you get out there and you don't have the room to carry it. It's just good to keep this with you, whether it's in your vehicle or on your kayak. Sunscreen, I suggest keeping this with you on your kayak just because you wanna apply it multiple times a day even if you cover yourself up with the buffs and your sunglasses and your hats, you still want to apply this multiple times a day. Number 11, hydration. I drink a lot of coffee. Even in the summertime, I drink a lot of coffee. That's probably the one of the worst things I can do when I'm on the water. But I think my body's so used to drinking so much coffee, it doesn't affect me. But I still drink cold liquids as well. And I just take water with me. I don't take energy drinks because I don't want all that sugar. I take water with me and I keep it in my Yeti container. If you want, you can freeze some bottles. Actually, uh, I think JT, you know, fishing with Gramps covered that the other day. He's like, here's a little trick. So you can freeze some water bottles, like two or three water bottles. If you take a cooler with you and take another three or four water bottles with you and put those frozen ones in there, you know, from the night you froze the night before in the freezer, keep it in your cooler so it keeps everything cold that you take in your cooler. And as you drink those cold ones, you can start bringing out those ones that are frozen. They're gonna start defrosting at that point, stick them out in your, you know, in your cup holders on your kayak and they'll start defrosting faster. But you always wanna keep hydration with you. That's very, very important because we are, for the most part, we don't have a lot of breeze. We're getting that sun beat on us all day and it just takes it out. You don't realize how fast you can have a heat stroke or be dehydrated, dehydration, Unfortunately, if it gets to a point, it can kill you if you're dehydrated. So you want to stay hydrated. Hydration is very important on the water. All right, guys, I'm trying to get through this quick. We're getting down to that uh, last 20 items here uh, or the, down to the t number 20. But number 12, speaking of hydration, you want to bring a snack with you, especially if you are on the water for a long period throughout the day. I suggest bringing some jerky with you, maybe some nuts, a protein bar. 
I just bring things on with me that's high in protein. You can bring a can of tuna with you that you can just, the flip tops, little little fork. If you have to, you can eat it with your hands. But I suggest bringing like a little snack with you, a couple snacks throughout the day just to eat. It just keeps you, it keeps you feeling better. When I get hungry, don't have food by me, I get headaches. So, you know, just having that food helps your body stay, have nutrients, and it doesn't cause you to have a headache and kind of ruin your day. So I suggest keeping some kind of snacks with you on the water. It goes right side by side with hydration. Number 13, be mindful of the weather. Weather changes so, so fast. I mean, I get reports all the time. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful, calm day. Well, I get to the ramp. I check the weather one more time. Oh, now the winds are going to be 15 miles per hour. So I know there's going to be chop on the water. And now there's a storm coming in, possibly at 12, 1 o'clock. And it could be damaging winds, lightning, hail, all that good stuff. It changes so fast. So you want to be mindful of the weather. I check the weather pretty much if I'm going to go out on the weekend. I keep checking the weather every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the night before I go to bed, before I'm going to go out. As soon as I wake up in the morning and start my routine that I have, I check the weather and check it again. I check the weather again when I get to the ramp. It's always changing. So you want to be mindful of the weather because your trip that you might have planned for eight hours may only be a four hour trip because you got some really bad weather coming in. So you want to make sure you leave yourself enough time to get back and get to safety. Number 14, this comes kind of in part with the whole be mindful of the weather, a VHF radio, the little handheld ones. Now they're more important to have those. I don't carry one anymore. They make ones that are handheld. They work up to, I think, seven or eight miles. It's good if you go a little bit more offshore, maybe doing some saltwater fishing, or if you're in a larger body of a lake like the Great Lakes. You want to have the VHF radio with you. That's good because this way you can also hit that channel 16, talk to other boaters. Hey, whoever's coming at me, or you can just say to all the boaters, hey, I'm in a kayak. I got a boater coming at me. It's a white one, a blue one. You're coming really fast at me. Pay attention, look ahead, and maybe you're going to grab that person's attention. But it comes into the part with the weather with the VHF radio that on the VHF radios, they actually have like little weather channels that you can go to that also keeps continually uh, updating the weather. So you got that on those VHF radios, but the VHF radios are for the weather. They're for communication. They're for safety. They're a good thing to have. Not necessarily ha everybody has to have one. But if you go offshore and the larger bodies of water, I suggest the VHF radio. I don't have one to show you, but if you just Google VHF radio handheld, you'll see. And a lot of those radios now are waterproof. When you go or if you fall into the water and you have that VHF radio on your PFD, it normally uh, activates to the Coast Guard a signal that there's a man overboard. So if you are having issues, having health issues, and you end up falling in or you're falling in and you have that thing set up, it will alert the Coast Guard. So that may be a good thing. You can cancel them if you're not in distress and you get back in. But if you are in distress, it's a good thing to have that radio as well because it sends a signal to the Coast Guard. Not everyone has those, but a lot of them do have them now. And it's for that reason because they're handheld. They know you're in either in a smaller boat, you're in a kayak or whatever. So that's why they made that option now, which I think is really great. All right, guys, we're down to the last five items. These last five items, I you don't necessarily have to have. They're more of an opinion. But if you watch a lot of my videos, I utilize the kayak cushion. The kayak cushion, I didn't use till after about two years when I started kayak fishing. And when I, when I got the kayak cushion, it made a tremendous world of difference in my comfort. Me staying on the water for six, seven, eight hours plus. There's a lot of guys out there that spend even more time. But without that kayak cushion, you don't realize what you're missing until you get one and actually have it underneath your butt. It makes, it takes the pressure. There's like, even on the website itself, it shows you your pressure points on your butt and it relieves all that pressure. A lot of the kayak uh, seats now are very comfortable and, you know, like a mesh webbing and they're very comfortable. If you have a lot of meat on your butt, you may not need a kayak cushion, but if you don't have a lot of meat, even with those web seats, they can get you can get pressure points on your butt, and everybody's body's built differently. So somebody may be able to go all day without a kayak cushion. There might be other people that are out there like me now. I cannot survive without without the kayak cushion. They make they're not expensive. They're like seventy bucks is your max. You can get them customized and have a lot of fun with those with the customization. But they make a world of difference. They, he makes ones now that are. Uh, you know, for the lumbar support called the Kush Bar. And uh, they're very, very cool. Actually, this video may be out before he's on, but the guy from Kai Cushion is actually going to be on Fishing with Gramps, I think coming up soon on his live stream. So he'll be on there soon with JT Fishing with Gramps. 
and you can actually watch that live stream and learn a little bit more about that as well. But the Kai Cushion can't do it without it anymore, guys. And if you look at most of the people who are out there professionally or fish on the water a lot, they have the Kai Cushion. You don't know what you're missing, so get one. Number 16. It's happened to me already. I just got this paddle not too long ago. I have it on the new canoe. I have the Torquedo motor now on the new canoe, so you get a lot of speed on that. And when I'm running through the chop, the way my paddle sits on their holder, I may change it up because of this, but their holder for their paddle on the new canoe, Unlimited, is built, like, well, built right in. It's like a handle, and it's also a paddle holder. I've been utilizing that already in the chop. The way this paddle is on there actually has came off already a few times. And I had no idea I lost my paddle until I started feeling something really weird on my boat. And the reason why I didn't lose this paddle is because I use the Rogue Gear Company tether. And I have my tether paddle off right now. The tether, the rest of the tether is on the kayak. I just had the little quick clip that, you know, disconnects it, which you can see that you disconnect it real easy. And you can store your paddle and leave your, your, your leash itself on the kayak. But without this, I would have lost this paddle. And these paddles are $250. I've knocked it off, I think, three times now. And I would have lost it because I would have kept that motor in the lawn. Paddle would have floated somewhere else. And I would have never probably recovered it. And then I would have had no paddle in case that if I had an issue to get back to safety. So I'm glad I actually had this tethered off. And that comes into the, you know, the whole tether in your gear. Anything that you really care about. I care about everything I have in my kayak, but I don't tether everything, unfortunately. Paddle is one of them because that's very important to have and I don't want to lose, but you know, your fishing rods, any gear you can tether one way or another to your kayak, your fishing rods, uh, your paddles. I even use it on my phone and I tether it off to my PFD using the same Rogue Gear Company uh, products. I just tether off my phone. I tether off my paddle, but tethering items on your kayak are important if you don't want to lose them. It's not if, it's when. At one point, you are either going to fall out of your kayak or you're going to totally flip your kayak, and you are going to lose gear if it's not tethered off. So if you're only taking a couple of poles out there, it's a lot easier to tether those. With the Black Pack Pro that I have you know, from Yak Attack, my rods are, are technically tethered in the tubes as long as you keep that hook on there. So that's kind of how I rely on my fishing rods to be tethered is with the Yak Attack black pack pro with the tether tubes but if you just have a couple rot fishing rods that are just staged next to you on your chair you may want to get uh leashes for those and there's a lot of companies out there besides rogue gear that make tethers for your fishing rods or a lot of people put like almost like either pool noodles i know they make floats for it to have you leash your fishing rod float but tethering your gear is important if you don't want to lose it because you are going to or fall out of your kayak. And when you go sideways, some stuff will fall out of your kayak. So that's important, guys. Number 17. This is the anchor I use. Now, a lot of people say, what do you need an anchor for in a kayak? You don't, but I do. This is, you know, once again, this whole video is about opinion. I tether, I mean, I'm sorry, I anchor my kayak a lot more than I thought I would not. And I, I anchor up every time I catch a fish, especially if it's windy out. It holds my position, so I don't have to worry about being blown around while I take a picture of my fish on the, you know, the bump board if I'm submitting for a competition, or if I just want to stage somewhere. They make, you know, this is an easy way to uh, anchor your kayak. You can just throw this off the side with a, a rope and just tie it off to your kayak. But I have the Anchor Wizard. I actually have a video of the new install on my new canoe, which I will put at the end of this video. I use the Anchor Wizard with the grappling style anchor. I do it a lot, but there's also the power pull out there, but that can get expensive. But having an anchor on your kayak, I feel is important. Not every scenario that I go out or every time I go out, do I take this with me? I usually just take this on days where I know I want to anchor up, especially if it's going to be windy or if I just want to anchor up and stage myself, if I know I'm going to be staging that day on a certain area. So I'm not constantly either fooling around with my motors or fooling around with my paddle. Or if you have a pedal drive going forward, going back, you can just anchor up real easy and hold your position. And the reason why I use the anchor wizard over like the power pole is because I'm in areas where I'm in 15, 20, 30, sometimes 180 feet of water I've actually been in before. I don't anchor in that, but I go in a lot deeper water. So that's why I use the anchor wizard, which I think either gives you 100 or 150 feet of paracord. So I'm covered. I probably wouldn't anchor in no more than 30 feet of water anyway, but you can't do that with a power pole. But I like anchors on my kayak. Like I said, it's just an opinion. You don't have to have an anchor, but I think it's a good to have 
if you do a lot of competition fishing. So when you catch a fish, you can just throw that anchor off real quick, hold you in position. You don't have to worry about drifting out into the channel, getting hit by a boat. It just holds you tight to where you are and you can do what you got to do. And you just simply, with the anchor wizard, just wind it up and away you go. Number 18. Now, <laughs> everybody's different, but there's those times where you need to go to the bathroom, guys. So in this dry bag, I keep toilet paper with me. Uh, you can keep dude wipes with you. Dude wipes is probably a better option. But I keep toilet paper on the kayak with me for those just-in-case moments. Actually, out of all the seven years, not to be personal, out of all the seven years, I've only had to do it once. Everybody's different. So I suggest keeping toilet paper or dude wipes with you. And you know the reason why we're not getting into too deep of a conversation about why you should keep toilet paper with you. But, you know, you can blow your nose with it and do a lot of things with toilet paper. Hey, you get a cut. You can use that to help, you know, clot it up. If you don't have a first aid kit, maybe some tape or electrical, uh, some tape or uh, fishing line. You may want to take some toilet paper to help that bleeding. Number 19, guys, fishing net. I got the Yak Attack Leverage Landing Net. Fish with a fishing net or have a fishing net uh, with me to about probably two years ago. So out of the seven years, I went five years without it. For the most part, I was okay. But out of all those years, I can't tell you how many fish I lost. And when you start getting into competition fishing, or if you, even if you're not doing competition, even if you want to get a picture of that fish or say, wow, look, I just caught a 12 pounder. There's a lot of times when that fish gets close to the boat, you think you have enough pressure on it and it jumps. And I can't tell you how many fish have thrown the hooks. I missed my personal best, and I knew it was because I saw it. it was the largest largemouth bass I've actually had on my line, and I lost it right at the boat. After that day, I literally probably within 30 seconds of after losing that fish, I text my wife, I'm getting a net. She's like, I'm surprised it's taking you this long. So I think having a net on your kayak is its almost as important as a PFD to me anymore. A net is more important than you think because you lose so many fish right at the boat. I can't tell you how many. And if you don't want to lose fish or lose that opportunity to get your, your personal best or take a picture or prove, because you know us as fishermen, we uh, tend to uh, fib a little bit, but be able to prove that you caught that fish or be able to land that fish, you, you need to have a net. These things are getting smaller. Uh, they're, they're getting more portable. There's a lot of cool ones out there. And the way the kayaks are laid out today, you have a very easy... You know, you have enough space on your kayaks to keep a net with you. I know there's quite a few people that don't utilize them and will probably never have a net. But I personally believe that you should have a net on you when you are going fishing where those days really matter to you. There, yes, there is a few days where I still go out without the net, but probably 90% of the time that net is with me. All right, guys, as I look at my list here, this is it. You guys, hopefully you guys have been with me this whole video. If you have, I appreciate it. But number 20. This is the most important item on this list, and, it, and that is to have fun. Don't take this seriously every time you go out. You have to enjoy what we do and really appreciate being in a kayak over a boat or any other vessel. Kayak fishing is unbelievable. It gives you a different perspective when you're on the water, being so low, being close to the elements, being close to the fish or the turtles that you catch, or any large thing that may come next to you. Being in the kayak is a very cool experience. It's fun. So you have to have fun and enjoy this. That's why we do this. You know, We work our butts off to be able to afford this stuff. You can get into kayak fishing pretty inexpensive, but the more you're in it, you just keep upgrading or changing gear. That's why it comes back to number one real quick. When you purchase a kayak, spend as much money as you can. This way it saves you money in the long run. If you follow along with me, you see I've spent so much money on trailers and gear to get to where I want to be and be happy. So with my, with me spending the money, hopefully it allows you not to spend the money and save some money so you can just watch my mistakes and learn along the way. But number 20, guys, I know I get off the subject. Number 20, though, is to have fun. Enjoy being on the water with yourself, with your family, you know, I like to go fishing a lot by myself. It's my alone time. It's the way I heal on the water. Follow me. I do heroes on the water and it's a whole healing process for me. It's also fun. Not every time I go out, it's for me to heal. But when I go out in the water, it is for me to heal in one way or the other, whether I had a bad week at work or I have some personal things going on, you know, my mental demons in my head, 
it's a way for me to heal, but I go out and I really enjoy myself and I have a blast doing this. If you've been found along, you can see how much money I have invested in this. And I really love this sport and I hope you guys do too. So hopefully this, these 20 items help you get the right things that you need to have in a kayak. Probably 13 items on this list I suggest that you either do or have on the kayak. Probably from 14 down, 14 through 20, it's more of an opinion, but it does make a difference. Trust me, everything from that, you know, 14 down, the VHF radio, the kayak cushion, the tether, the anchor, the toilet paper, the net, and having fun are just as important as the first 13 items, guys. So I really appreciate all of you. I'm going to let you guys go back to your lives. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll be catching you guys soon. The next video coming up will be the monthly update. So I hope to see you guys there, and we're going to see who won last month for the month of August, and we are going to start our September. And I already have in mind what I'm going to say that you have to comment on the when, you know, when in October for September. So as always, guys, I really appreciate all of you. I'm going to get off here because I'm sweating. And as always, be safe on the water, and I'll catch you guys on the water. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon.